Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Those of you were uh, at the last session, the, the discovering the varied wines of Spain. Uh, welcome back. And those of you who just joined us, uh, welcome to Spanish Wine Week online. Uh, so we've got um, our section now, live interviews. Uh, we've got um, three fantastic wine producers to introduce you to. One, one I see has gone away from him, and there he is. They, <laughs> Jesus. Um, so uh, before we um, have a chat with each producer, I'd just like to introduce you, um, like them to introduce themselves, say their name and the winery, and, and then we'll we'll kick off with the first one. So say, say hello to you. Um, so hello. Here. Uh, I am uh, Jesus Gonzalez de Chavez from Quinta San Antonio in Valle de la Orotava, Tenerife. Okay, and up here we've got next to me okay i'm igor perez from montreaga winery in castilla la mancha and down below me we've got anthony i cannot hear you i can hear jesus and igor but not you well it's just uh, i'll introduce you jose maria ferrer from anthony you can't hear me cannot hear you Okay, uh, uh, let me introduce you then. There's Jose Maria Ferrer and the winery is um, Cansala, yes, Agricola Cansala. Right, well, let's go um, over to Jesus here. Um, Jesus, we've just, just had a presentation on um, Valle de la Orotova. Um, can you tell us um, a little bit about uh, this region, the soils, the climate, uh, the varieties you're working with? Okay, uh, well, to everyone, uh, well, at Quinta San Antonio, uh, we, are, uh, a small, we are a small winery, artisanal family run winery. Uh, we have got three hectares in, in the valley. And uh, well, this is in, in the north of Tenerife, uh, one of the Mary Islands, uh, uh, and our brand name is Plante. Uh, we have just one. Uh, we started bottling wine on 2013, and uh, well, the name comes from the, the influence of the ocean. Uh, uh, as you might have heard, the, the, the Atlantis legend from, from Plato also influenced us, uh, his name. And uh, well, the, the Canary Islands are said, are said to be the, the, the highest mountains of, the, of this submerged continent. Um, um, well, we're just uh, bottling 6,000 bottles. Uh, we have the, the possibility to, to increase productions and uh, as we're selling grapes to, to, other, to other wineries. And, and well, before 2013, we, we used to make bulk wine and it has been like that for generations and but uh, on that uh, year we thought that we had enough quality and, and, and decided to, to have a, our own brand well i'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little, a little bit about the the history uh, of the canary islands as a wine region producer uh, some people might don't some people don't know very much about us, but we we, we, we got the first uh, vine sticks on back on the 15th century. And uh, then on the 16th and 17th century, this uh, region became a, a large producer. We exported wines uh, mainly to the, to the UK uh, and also to, to Europe. Uh, uh, the different courts, the important uh, noble families, they, they, they love the, the canary wine, Mons, canary malmsey, or canary sack, as it was often also called. Uh, and these wines <coughs> were made, sorry, were made mainly of uh, malmsey and, and torontes, uh, white uh, varietals, sweet wines. Um, and then again, uh, well, there was a, a commercial crisis, a commercial war that took the, the Mamsi, the Canary wines out of the market. And then on the 18th century, we started again exporting 
wines to uh, to the UK and to the British colonies in America and, and in other parts of the world. But this time it was not Mal Malvasia, it was not Malmasy. It was, uh, these were different uh, varietals that came from uh, different parts of the Mediterranean Sea, also the Spanish and the Iberian Peninsula. And uh, that's the reason why we have so many different grape varietals here. I, I will name just a, just a few, uh, like uh, Listan Negro, Vijariego Negro, uh, Tintilla, Negra Mol. We have many reds and also for white wines, uh, like uh, uh, Wal, uh, Marmajuelo, uh, Listan Blanco, Albillo Criollo, Verdeyo, and many others. They are listed, officially listed, up to 35 different varietals, local varietals, but there are even, even more on the vineyard, which are still to be classified. That's incredible. Uh, That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. We, uh, Clara, in the last session, talking about um, wines of Spain in general, mentioned that uh, for the um, Lista Negro, the vines were trained on a unique um, method, Cordon Trenzado. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about what that is exactly? Why, why is it unique? And, and well, yes. How does it, exactly how does it work? Yes. Uh, well, as I was telling you, we have a a long history here about uh, as a wine region and uh, Cordon Trenzado is part of it. Cordon Trenzado, I would say it's uh, the braided cord. I would say it's uh, an important part of our, our culture. The, this training method is only found in Valle de la Orotava. Uh, it's a weird way of doing things. Uh, it, it looks strange to the, the, the first time you see it. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, the plant it's uh, conducted on a horizontal way. Uh, six or six to eight arms are uh, they are put alongside on on the, on the same direction. And uh, well, uh, it's uh, really expensive to work this this training method, but it comes from from the very old times. It has some technical reasons uh, when Malvasia was produced, and then the the laborers, the, the, they decided to, to keep the same method. And the thing is that we, we have a very, very old vineyard here. Uh, for example, the vineyard we have for reds, uh, it can be up to two centuries. Uh, this uh, is possible because the, the Cordon Trenzado training method is very delicate with the plants. When pruning, you don't have to make any, any hard wounds, any deep cuts. And uh, this is very, very gentle with the plant. And this is the reason why, well, and of course, uh, we did not have any phylloxera. Right. Um, so, since uh, I think, so, uh, yeah, for me, your image is stuck. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is um, we're going to have a quick video. We happen to have a video of, of the region. Uh, maybe if you could um, tune in again, and uh, we might get you back so we can see the wines you've got to present. Could you just do that? Sorry, I, I switch off. I mean, you mean? Uh, come back in. Come back in because the, the uh -huh. image is frozen. Okay. And might be a I'll, connection. I'll so uh, yes. we're, we're going to just watch a quick video while uh, you do that, which um, will show us a, a bit of, of your um, your region, what it actually um, looks like. Let's have a go here. All right. Here we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so as we're live, we're having some technical hitches. Um, um, we'll get Jesus back. I hope, hopefully, there he is, coming back in and hopefully with uh, some movement this time. Um, let me see what's happening in the chat. So the video was frozen as well. Let's, um, let's, let's do that again. So I, I didn't see it all either. And I'm gonna 
Play the video. Here we go. Del mar a las faldas del Teide. La viña ha con... Thing, is it? Well, here I am again. Can you hear me? Okay, so it seems that uh, that's also sticking. So <laughs> let's go down to uh, uh, Jesus again. See if we can get some movement. Okay, could, could, so you've got a couple of lines to show us. Could, can, can you show us, uh, talk us through them? Hello? Yes, okay, we're ready to, to see your wines. Okay, uh, well, let me show you uh, Atlante uh, made of uh, li 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 Listan Negro grapes. This is Atlante made of Listan Negro grapes. This wine comes from, from a very old vineyard, as I was saying before. Uh, 150 years uh, without a doubt or even more. Uh, well, we have a lot of influence of the of the ocean. We have a, a lot of influence from the volcanic soils here. We have a mild uh, climate. Uh, uh, temperatures here during the summer don't go, don't go very high. Uh, this, um, well, this wine it's very much marked by the by the by these uh, low temperatures, especially during the months of July and August. Then during uh, before harvest, four to six weeks before harvest, we'll have much more sunshine and and we'll have really good grapes to to, to harvest. Uh, well, the volcanic soil here uh, we have a uh, clay, of course, we have a uh, basalt basalt rocks. We have uh, pumice, we have uh, some heavy and, and light volcanic material. Uh, well, we like the, the way we work, it's very artisanal. Uh, we like uh, making wine with our hands and, and we, we use the, the old lagar that we have at the winery. These are open concrete uh, deposits uh, where the, the wine is fermented uh, spontaneously. We don't add any, any yeast. Uh, it stays there for, for, for a week, up to 12 days, depending on the vintage. Uh, some, a part of it uh, is, is with whole clusters. And uh, well, you just let, go, let the temperatures go high and, and there's no temperature control. And well, after that, we, we, we have a, an old vertical press, which we still use and, and take it to, to 600 liter uh, French oak deposits barrels i mean uh, to finish the fermentation and it stays there for 12 months we don't uh, filter or clarify the this 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 wine uh, we think uh, listan negro is at at its best when uh, not uh, too much uh, move i mean we don't rack it a lot or we don't move it uh, when we have the mask uh, when, when it's fermenting we don't we don't move it uh, we don't move it a lot we, we try it on a very gentle way uh, this wine gives you uh, cracked pepper on the nose well i have to say that at the beginning uh, most of the wines you'll find uh, in valle de la Orotava, they are a bit reductive the listan negro is reductive uh, so you'll get some gun powder at the beginning then you'll get you'll get some more fruit aromas uh, cracked pepper herbs and uh, I would say it has a medium body, easy to pair with different types of food, uh, like, uh, well, I love it with uh, spicy meals. And it's, it's easy to, to have a meal with, with it. We don't have high alcohol levels. We can go up to 13, something 13.5, but that's a, a, a max, that's a maximum normally. Okay. That's that's great. Um, 
volcanic wines and, and, and smells they smell actually smell like a volcano. Well, a little bit. Uh, yeah. A little bit it, it does. Of course, these minerals we have with such an old uh, uh, vineyard uh, that has very deep roots and with uh, so many uh, minerals and, and the reactions are, are a bit different. And you can you can get that in the, in the wines. Yes, of course you do. Okay, so uh, we're going to pass over now to um, uh, our second uh, wine producer. So if you could just keep 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 online there, because so we need you at the end, uh, Jesus. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, um, Igor now. If we may. Hello. Uh, from completely opposite end of the country, up in the north of Spain, uh, around Cuenca, isn't it? You're, um, you're based. Okay, uh, well, hello to everybody. Uh, I'm Igor Perez, export manager from Montreal Winery. Uh, we are in Castilla-La Mancha. Montreal is a small family winery. Instead of our production, uh, depending on the year, could wish surrounding 300,000 bottles a year. So it's not a very low production, it's a mini production. And today we are producing 10 different wines, from young wines to grand reserve wines. Oh, overall, we are producing from six different grapes. Uh, we are producing from four French grapes varieties. We are using Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Merlot, and Shiraz. And also we are using Tempranillo and Verdejo. But uh, today I would like to talk to you about two of our newest wines we, we are presenting this year. Uh, the first one is Isola. Isola means island in Italy. Um, it's a 100% Verdejo uh, wine with a uh, bit uh, the aging is, is it's in its own list. So during three months, uh, this wine uh, is within its own list. Uh, so what we get is a more aromatic, round, uh, a little bit more complex wine. Uh, and other wine representing this year is Isola, but the red young wine that is a 100% Syrah. Uh, both wines come from a limestone soil. Um, both are organic wines overall because principal markets are working today with organic wine. So, uh, and for production, and instead of it's a low production, we are exporting to many different countries from Asia to the United States. Um, Moriaga is a winery that is uh, 755 meters above sea level. So, uh, Moriaga in Castilla-La Mancha, we have a very continent, continental uh, climate, uh, very warm summer seasons and very cold winter seasons. Our production in our winery today is about 80 hectares. Uh, we are not only producing. Uh, wines we have a few hectares of uh, cereals uh, we have a few hectares of almonds too um mariaga one of the main difference with other wineries uh, from castilla la mancha is that our main production is dedicated uh, to very long aging process so we are working under an igp the de castilla and our wines uh, our principal wines uh, are from 12 months inside American and French oaks to the Grand Reserva wines who spent 36 months in, in French or American oaks. After that aging process inside the oaks, what we do usually is to give the double of the time the wine has spent inside the oaks, we give the aging process inside the bottle. So for a wine like Monreaga Tempo, uh, this one that is a blending between Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah, 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, that is Sorry, 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 50% Syrah. Uh, this wine spends 12 months in American oaks for Cabernet Sauvignon and French oaks for Syrah. And after that aging process in the oaks, uh, we get to these bottles 
24 more months in the in the bottle to get that uh, uh, tasting very smooth wines, easy to drink, very aromatic. Because we we always are looking to produce aromatic wines, very easy to drink, uh, to share with any kind of moment with anybody. No? So these are probably the main characteristics of our wines. I can hear you, Anthony, at this moment. Oh, impossible to hear you. Impossible. I don't know if it's only me or anybody else is having the same problem. Well, I, I was I was talking about about the the way to produce our wines. We start working in the year 2003 uh, to produce our own wines. Before that years, we were uh, selling our, our production to cooperative here in Castilla-La Mancha. Uh, you know, Castilla-La Mancha is the bigger extension of vineyards together of the world, and in this area of La Mancha, uh, you know, the land of Don Quixote uh, is a beautiful fields uh, surrounded by windmills and castles. Uh, I invite everybody who wants to come to visit our wine area or our environment here to La Mancha. I don't know, Anthony. If yes. Uh, uh, ah, no, I can hear you now. Well, you know what? I just had my mic off, so that's <laughs> simple explanation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. It, uh, no, I was trying to say at some stage that you're, you're actually near quite close to Cuenca. Yes, Cuenca yeah. is fantastic, beautiful, um, those overhanging houses on the cliffs. Are you quite close to the town of Cuenca? Well, uh, Cuenca is around 100 kilometers, 45 minutes from Wainari to Cuenca. Uh, Cuenca is more the uh, area of Castilla-La Mancha that we call the La Sierra, no? With the small hills, mountains. Uh, in this area of Monriaga, we are in the, the, the flat terrain uh, <laughs> where you can lose your, your, your vision, no? with, with hundreds of, of, of vineyards. It's a little different uh, uh, panoramic view from or winery, but really close to Cuenca, yes. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, again, I ask you to keep with us because we want to um, direct the um, the audience to um, some information, more information about each winery. So we're going to down down into Catalonia now to um, that close where we're transmitting. Uh, didn't get. Um, let's have a look who we got, and we got Jose Maria Ferrer of the uh, Vins Familia Ferrer. So, um, I understand you um, had a bit of some kind of debate on the last um, uh, session about um, Dio Catalunya, uh, but you're, you're working on the Dio Catalunya and the uh, Dio Cava. Um, so, perhaps you could um, tell us about um, the, the, the Cavas. You, you, you are, I think, you're, you're um, Cava de Paraje, one of the few. Yeah, uh, Cava producers Paraje. still making, uh, still in Dio Cava producing Cava de Paraje. Perhaps we could start there. I think it would be interesting for the. Um... Okay, okay, of course. We can. Uh, we are producing Cava de Paraje. Our Cava de Paraje is Cansala. This is the, the label. And we produce exclusively Cava de Paraje with a very long or, or extended aging. We believe, well, first of all, explain a little bit what is a Cava de Paraje. Cava de Paraje is the, the higher tier of the Cava classification. So we have four different kinds of Cava. We have the regular Cava. Most important between other difference, the most important one would be the, the aging. The regular Cava, it has a minimum of nine months aging. Then we have the reserve Cava, 15 months. Then we have the Grand Reserve, uh, 30 months. And then Cava de Paraje, between other things, has to age for 36 months minimum. Uh, the other main different thing is that the, the vineyard has, has to be approved and selected by the appellation. 
is a vineyard selected for the special quality of the soils or the weather of the climate. So something that makes the grapes very, very special and unique to produce good, good cabas. And then the yields, the production has to be reduced, has to be reduced by 33%. Instead of producing 12,000 kilograms per hectare, you are allowed only to produce 8,000 kilograms per hectare. Everything is to, to make a, a bigger, a more quality cava. Uh, we are doing that. We are following all the, the requirements of the appellation to produce our cavas de paraje. The only thing is that the we aging, we like to extend our aging much longer than the, the permit. If the regulation say 36 months, in our case with Cansala, we are aging our cavas a minimum of 72 months for our entry level. And for our Cansala, our premium cava, we are aging 12 years. This is the 2008 that was released last month. Uh, well, this is quite a big commitment, you know, because we have to take, um, we have to have our covers for a long time in the in the cellars at the wineries, and um, and we and we can do that extended aging because the way that we are producing, we are producing in our old um, historic wineries. I'm running out of battery. <laughs> I hope it, it lasts. Uh, and, and we are producing our cabas like uh, 130 years ago. It's a historical winery, a winery that, that belongs to the family of what was built by my grandfather, my great grandfather in 1895. And we are using the same processes and the same techniques that my great grandfather was using back in 1895. The press, wood press machine, the pre, the same decanting systems, the same movements of the of the wine. So we are producing in the old-fashioned way, and this is incredible. It's giving us an amazing quality cabas. Okay. Um, in fact, I, I can vouch for, because um, we, we organize, as uh, some of you may know, the annual competition 50 Great Cabas. And uh, mm -hmm. I can say that the Cansana got the gold medal um, for 2020. So, um, and also I think it appeared in 50 Great Sparkling Wines and also with the actual competition winner beating Champagne. So, congratulations okay, thank, on that. Thank you, thank you Anthony. You, you, I know that you, you do good tasting. You do serious tasting. Now, what about um, Dio Catalunya? You mentioned uh, on your profile, uh, which I'm Yeah, in Dio, Dio Catalunya, we are producing wines from Dio Catalunya, and this is also in another of our historical cellars. This is a, a, a cellar that came back from the uh, well, 13th century. It's a farmhouse from the 13th century. So it's a very old farmhouse that belongs to the Ferrer family since 1616. So we have been for, hundred, for, hundred, for more than 100 years uh, harvesting and taking care of our vineyards and, the, and our estate. And in this estate, it's a big estate, we have selected just um, four blocks of vineyards, around eight hectares to produce our wines. We are producing only 30,000 bottles of wine from coming from our most selected uh, vineyards. As I said before, our estate is 200 hectares, exactly 186 hectares, and we have selected eight to produce our wines. Our wines are very unique, and we are trying to make our wines very, very special. That one, the one that I wanted to present today is the Josep Ferrer Cabernet Sauvignon Grenache. What makes this wine very special? Well, all our wines are state wines. We want all our wines to reflect the terroir, the special terroir from Mediona. In Mediona, you know very well, Anthony, because you live around here, that in Mediona we have a very special climate. Our average temperature is much lower than in the rest of the Penedes, and we have the soils and the climate suitable for, for, to grow different kind of varietals that are not suited for other parts of the Penedes. In our state, we are planting Pinot Noir, we have Sauvignon Blanc, 
we have Chardonnay, we have Cabernet Sauvignon, and of course we have the traditional varietals of the Penedès and Cabernet region, Parellada, Macabeu, and, and Charello. This one, that one that, we, that I'm presenting, is the 50% blend of Grenache and Cabernet Sauvignon. What makes this wine very special? Well, we are producing this wine in the Amarone style. So we are dehydrating the Cabernet Sauvignon, only the Cabernet Sauvignon, because the Cabernet Sauvignon that is planted in the Penedès, we find that it is kind of very green. It has a lot of piracinas, and it has a lot of the green pepper and herbaceous flavor. To avoid that, we are dehydrating the grapes and we are, we are making the vinification with raisins of Cabernet Sauvignon. That gives us a wine that is very concentrated, very intense, and with a lot of sugar and flavor concentration. And, and makes the wine very sm smooth later when you, you taste it. And then we have the Grenache that we are going the other way around. We are trying to play with a very bright and, and very young Grenache. We are vinification. We are making the vinification with a very cold grape. We have the cold, the grapes in a, in a cold um, chamber for two days at two degrees. And then when the, when the grapes go into the tank, they are very, very cold and all the vinification process is very, very slow. Also, we are playing with a lot of whole berries. We don't want to, the berries to be broken, to be break. So we are doing kind of a, a maceration fermentation. That give, will give us a lot of fruit and it will give us a, a, a wine that is very youthful with a lot of fruit, with acidity, that is perfect to blend with uh, Cabernet Sauvignon that is very complex with a lot of, of, of ripening and, and intensity. And that gives a, a wine that is very, very interesting. We aged the wine for four years in barrels, four years in 1,200 liters barrels. This is because this is the traditional size of in the farmhouses of Catalonia. That, that was, that's, those were the barrels that were used for, for our ancestors in the farmhouses. And we wanted to follow the, the tradition and using these 1,200 liter barrels. We call them botas. And, and we, we age for four years in the bota. And, and well, and we can do that because the, the bota, the ratio that we have of the wine against wood is much higher, much more wine than in the traditional barrique or barrel. And then because we are using untoasted oak, so that will give, uh, will permit us to, to age our wine for longer without having an overboot wine. You have to try the wine, it's very inter interesting and it's very different to any, to any other wine that is produced in the Panadés or in Catalonia. Okay, good. Well, talking of uh, tasting wine, um, just going back to, um, Oh, he's, he's gone again. <laughs> but over to Igor. I mean, what, what markets are you interested, particularly in exporting to at the moment? Do you have any preferences? Uh, well, uh, well, we are already exporting to to south of Germany and wines. Well, to me, it's like an export. Also, go to 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 Spain to the mainland. But I want to be in like uh, UK. The, East Coast, the United States, uh, Nordic countries, Sweden and Norway, Belgium, Japan. Uh, well, I would like to, to go abroad and uh, because I think wines are very interesting to, to foreign countries. Uh, okay, and Igor, the same question. Are you, do you have um, some markets in mind to, for export that, that so many wine importers will be watching this now and, and afterwards when the, the the recordings go onto the website. Do you have any um, target markets? I think your sound's not on, if you can hear me. You don't have your mic, okay. Now, yeah. Yes, I, I was saying that, of course, uh, for us it's very interesting in international market. Actually, we are working in the United States, but 
on the East Coast. We are working in New Hampshire, Miami, and we are working with Puerto Rico, but we are interested to to work with my friend is uh, online today. I am Smith in Atlanta, if it's possible. I would like to, to do so once, of course, to New York, Washington, that are very interesting markets for us. Asia, of course. Uh, we have worked with uh, China, uh, we have worked before with uh, South Korea, but uh, there are very interesting markets as Japan and Seoul. Uh, there are very big cities that, of course, uh, and European markets. Uh, overall, we are working with uh, Holland, uh, Poland too, um, but we are still uh, looking for new customers and interests of markets in different countries. Right, and Jose Maria, how about, how about? Well, we are well represented in the Asian countries, in Japan, Singapore, in Thailand, Philippines, and our priority is looking west. We want to go to the United States and, and of course, Scandinavian countries and the UK. Because our production is very limited, I think that we want to focus in the, in the East Coast uh, of the United States, I think Florida, New York, Massachusetts, Georgia, and well, if the opportunity is there, even Illinois, it would be a, a good opportunity. Right. So um, what I'm going to do now is take the screen. I'm going to uh, uh, share my screen uh, so that because um, uh, we do have a facility on the website where importers, distributors, wine buyers can, can uh, fix an appointment with our wineries featured on the program. So I'm going to just share my screen, hopefully glitches. Uh, if we go into um, the, the Wine Pleasures website, we have the participating wine producers. And the first up today was the, the three we have with us today, Atlante, if we click on there, um, we will go into their profile. And uh, there's the wines we presented. And you, here you have a um, chance to um, Request an appointment, suggest today, say who you are. I'm a wine importer, distributor, journalist. Anyone to chat about this, that, and the other. Thought the wines look great. Limited old vines, limited production, volcanic, just what our markets are looking for. Um, so you can contact Jesus. You can do the same for Igor, it has his page contact form, you can send him a, a meeting request and of course the uh, same goes for uh, Jose Maria uh, highlighting the, the two wines we talked about today and opportunity to request a meeting. So if you're interested, if you're a wine importer, distributor, purchase decision maker, please um, uh, send in a, a meeting request through the form so that they can um, uh, set up and uh, fix an appointment with you. Now, how do we get out the screen share? So I'm just going to figure out how to get the screen share off <laughs> and I'll be right back. There we go. A technical assistant by my side. So let's get all back on stage. So, um, so, Jesus, thank you very much for joining us from Tenerife. It's sunny Tenerife, no doubt. Sunny and hot. Well, the air is 300 miles away, so it takes a while. For the oh, sorry, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear you. I'm just saying thank you for joining us from Tenerife, and I'm saying it's probably very sunny and hot. <laughs> it is, in fact, it is. I stay at home. <laughs> thank you very much to all of you. And of course, thank you to Igor for joining us from Castilla La Mancha. Thank you very much. You are invited to come when you want. Right, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, of course, Maria, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you to That's you okay. for giving us the opportunity to talk yep. with the importers. I, I, I live maybe. 15 kilometers from the winery. I've never visited it, so I'll uh, yeah. um, visit it sometime. 
Okay, so um, as I said, go to the web website. You can um, get in touch with these uh, fantastic producers, request an appointment, and I'm sure they'd be delighted to um, uh, have a, a meeting like this online with, in the, from the comfort of your own uh, home or garden or mansion or whatever you have. I'm going to put up uh, the link for the next session, which is a um, session on a brand called Cord P. Nat, which is, uh, as I understand it, kind of a breakaway from uh, the D.O. Cava. So you might be interested to find out what that's all about. It's actually called Cord P. Nat, what's that? Uh, so if you don't know what it is, or not heard of it, or you've heard of it, but don't know what it is exactly, um, we've got uh, Xavier Gramona uh, uh, with us at three, what time? Let me look at the program. He'll be with us at uh, 4.30. So 4.30, next session. Uh, have a cup of tea, go and make it, put the kettle on, and uh, we'll see you back here at 4.30. Just click on the link on the chat, the top right of your screen, and uh, we hope to see you then. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, thanks. Bye.